So I was um, watching the movie about Joan of Arc called The Messenger. Very interesting. And so she uses a sword and a sword appears. And we have a lot of movie symbolism about magic swords appearing in different places. And also um, killing evil with a sword. Like in the Lord of the Rings, a woman kills the witch king with a sword through the face. And then in Harry Potter... He kills the basilisk with a sword through the pineal gland. So that's something we, I need to learn more about magic swords. King Arthur pulls a sword from the stone. And then in Astana, there's also what looks like a sword going through the dome. And I think that the sword also symbolizes the, um, the, chal um, the stem part of the chalice. So this would be the lower dome. This would be the upper dome. So then if it's the stem part of the chalice, it would also symbolize Orion. And it would also symbolize, and that would also uh, be akin to the Washington Monument. Okay. Well, what I wanted to point out with sword, we have the center, which is the OR, which is 33. This reduces to a 6. And then on the outer here we have, um, this would be, and the, the, these two letters form the 42, and I wrote here the meaning of life because I find that the 42, especially in movies, is code for the meaning of life. And I learned that also from the Zachary K. Hubbard channel, and I found that, that to be true. Wherever I find this um, number, there is a meaning of life symbolism there. So, um, kind of to live by the sword is to die by the sword. That would be the meaning of life. Um, I'm not sure how that relates to the Southwest, but maybe we could look at other SW words to consider that kind of um, symbolism. And so, but if you add the 42 to the 6, if you do your outer valence, that's 46, which is twice of 23, and that's the chromosome number, right? You have two sets of 23. And that makes the 46. So again, we, we kind of have a life number here. And we do. Uh, it does have two sides. A sword has two sides, which also kind of goes with the double 23. So it sort of cuts both ways. So that's. I just thought that was interesting. And then, um, <clears throat> so I wrote kind of like a little sentence for this word. That it would be the meaning of life, meaning of, life of the master worm, because I believe that the 33rd, 33 degrees is reserved. It's not for the commoners, you and I, it's reserved for the masters. And I believe that those guys are associated with um, the worm, the hieroglyph that we see in the um, Pharaoh hieroglyphs. This guy, actually I drew his little horns the other way. Now, but, but this is also in the dome. That's why we have the D on the end. And this is the place, you know, like an ord is a place. So that would show you where the worm is in the dome. It's a location. So just, these are just things that you need to consider and to kind of deepen your understanding of the word. This also has the word word in it, see? Let's take away, let's take away 19 from this. Oh, did I do the total? Where's the total? Oh, I didn't do it. Okay, so we have 33 and 46, 79, right? And so that's a 16, which um, whenever I see the 16s and the 61s, I think of a religion or a belief, a false religion. Well, actually, all religions are false. They're all they're they have shreds of truth and and stuffed with falseness. Um, and also beliefs and concepts do too. So, you know, um, there's pictures of Christ from the Middle Ages where he's holding a sword in his mouth, and what he's talking about is that it's really difficult. I, I think what those, or at least the painters talking about having to do with the sword. I don't know if Joshua ever talked about swords. 
But what the painter's talking about is that it's very difficult to talk about truth because all of your words are flawed. So that's very, really interesting that the sword would have this kind of flawed religion number when you reduce that. All right, well, let's take away 19 from this. So that's a 60. So the word is 60, which would be, to me, that's the field number um, raised a magnitude. Not squared, but right. I'm not sure if I used the right word where you, I don't know if that, I think that's the right word. Okay, so that is what I found out about the sword. Oh, well, also I did a few other things. I was just trying to find out more symbolism, like what is the sword? Okay, so it's two-sided. So that is a by, which is the two and the nine. And the two and the nine, I've talked a little bit about this, that it's interesting that the word by has has the um, the birth letter of the two that becomes three. And this is, I believe, a staff of the spine and the pineal gland. Like when you see the Pope holding a staff, I think this is what he's holding. He's holding the eye. And this has to do with the ego or the or the dream character of your experience. It's different from your actual true identity. And that when you combine those, you have this kind of, it's kind of a gateway number, or you could say twin, the twin aspect. Uh, I also did this because the sword is sharp, so I was looking at that. Sharp, I was kind of surprised. Um, as to a 62, which could be reduced to an 8. And I guess that, you know, the, I consider this to be the, the eternal time trap where you, um, you run around these infinite goals. And this is, um, I haven't talked about this in a while too, but this is kind of the symbolism of every sport that we have, where you run around, there's two, two opposing teams and the referees are in black and white, and you basically everybody runs around these goals and that's to me symbolic of how everybody runs through this infinite loop of time and one turn this is the this is the domain of the living right here 